Yo, welcome to this bonus Halloween episode of Terror Reels. Happy Halloween and cloud love to the whole city! Happy Halloween everyone! Here's a bonus episode for that ad. Today I'll be reviewing the 2018 remake of Halloween. Now don't put this movie in the same timeline as the rest of the franchise. This movie's supposed to be directly after the 1978 Halloween movie. So Mike isn't Lori's brother, and he never met Coolio. As a heads up, if you're in this chat, I won't be able to chat with you like I normally would. I'll be out partying with the Bender Boys and the Juggernauti at Hollow Fucking Wicked. Anyways, let's see what Dan McBride has in store for our horror world. Start this movie off at Smith Grove Mental Hospital. These two podcasters are here to get information on the infamous babysitter killer, Michael Myers. Our podcasters, Dana, played by Rain Reeves, and Aaron, played by Jefferson Hall, meet Michael's new doctor, Dr. Bartain, played by Hall Beginer. They walk into this weird chessboard like courtyard where everyone's chained to a giant weight. They walk into his cube. He doesn't give a shit about them until. You feel it, don't you, Michael? Not only is this mask evil enough to get Michael's attention, but also enough to make everyone in the loony bin go even nuttier. Later, we see Dana and Aaron go to get some more information for their podcast. But they're in the deep woods this time. They have some trouble getting into this compound-like house, but it's nothing some cash can't fix. It's Lori fucking Strode, played by the OG Scream Queen, Jamie Lee Curtis. She's a bit paranoid these days. You don't believe in a boogeyman? That says the tone for this entire interview they get from her. They do inform us that Myers is supposed to be transferred tomorrow at 7. Lori doesn't think this will happen. They quickly bring up her daughter getting taken away from her due to her paranoia. And that ends the interview for these clown shoes. Fuck, that's the quickest three grand anyone has ever made. This is where we meet Allison, played by Andy Matichak, having a regular normal everyday breakfast conversation with her parents. Oh man, I got peanut butter on my penis. On her way to school, we meet Allison's friend Vicky, played by Virginia Gardner, and Dave, played by Miles Robbins. This is where we find out that Myers isn't Lori's brother, and that was just some type of urban legend. I like how they went into telling us this, and not just ramming it down our throats. Dave doesn't think what happened 40 years ago was that important, and just wants to have some holiday fun. Happy Halloween! Now we meet Cameron, Allison's boyfriend, played by Dylan Arnold. You can tell that Oscar, played by Drew Sheed, is jealous of Cameron, and we'll see that play out later. We cut to Allie in a class where we get a new spin on that iconic shot from the first movie. His message is totally helpful. Laura gives her granddaughter the cash that she got from this podcasters and gives her some good advice. Fuck college. Go somewhere. Go to Mexico. We go over this pretty rad shooting range Lori has in her compound. This is just a fun way that this movie tells us how much the incident 40 years ago has affected her life. They also show us Lori drinking airplane bottles with a fucking gun in hand, watching Myers get transferred. Later, we see a son and father having a discussion about what's better, going hunting or dance class. The dad almost hits this guy in the street. It appears that the transfer bus has crashed and the people from the mental hospital are just walking around the crash site. The kid grabs a rifle and goes for his pops. As this cop tries to jump scare us, he hears a noise from the bus and goes to investigate just to shoot innocent Dr. Sartain. Don't shoot! The kid goes back to the truck and tries to drive off, but Michael Myers kills a fucking kid. Officer Hawkins, played by Will fucking Patton, gets called to the scene of the accident and promptly what the fuck's his pants. Officer Hawkins finds that the barely alive Dr. Sartain and informs him that Myers has escaped. We already knew that shit, or because if he wouldn't have escaped, we wouldn't have a fucking movie. Boom! Now in case you couldn't tell by this date card, it's Halloween. The podcasters visit Judith Myers' gravesite and gives us a backstory of what happened in the first movie. Just in case, this movie's your intro to Michael Myers. We cut over to Officer Hawkins and Sheriff Barker, played by Omar Dorsey, talking about how fucked their situation really is. Michael Myers, loose with a bunch of nutbags in Haddonfield on Halloween night? We wanna have a fucking circus on our hands. Tonight is gonna be a stabbing. Can't just cancel Halloween, so good fucking luck, guys. We come back to the podcasters filling up at a gas station, and Tina has to take a massive shit. If you look closely at this scene, you can actually see Michael Myers killing someone in the background. I love that. But if you don't know it's there, you could easily miss it. Dana finally finds the least blown up bathroom saw at this gas station and goes to take care of business. Myra tries to open the door, but she thinks being polite is going to stop this guy. Oh, shit. It actually works, and Myers begins to walk away. We cut to Aaron trying to pay for the gas, only to find the employees dead. Damn, that jaw looked rad as fuck. I lied when I said Michael Myers fell for the whole kill him with kindness thing, and dumps a handful of fucking teeth over the stall door. 
If she was backed up, I promise you, she ain't anymore. Holy fuck, that's so awesome. She tries to crawl stall to stall to escape, and after hitting her head off a shitty toilet, Aaron busts in the door and tries to fight Michael Myers. A crowbar to the face ain't shit for Myers, and Myers opens a stall door that Dana's in with Aaron's face. <laughs> As Aaron bleeds out in the corner like a bitch, Myers breaks Dana's neck and goes and gets the iconic mask because of course he knew where it would be. Lori's daughter, Karen, played by Judy Greer, comes home from the store to find that her back door is open and appears that no one is home. Karen's husband, Ray, played by Toby Huss, tries to jump scare us by coming in through the back door, but he's not frightening, so that shit don't work. Lori jump scares us, but she has a gun, which is way more effective. She's telling us how easy it would be for someone to break into her house. Lori heard about the incident with the bus and knows that Myers is on his way. Or Karen doesn't appreciate the help and kicks Lori out. During trick or treat, some blind kids just walk into Michael Myers. Look the fuck out. Out, you dummies. Myers grabs a hammer and we get this pretty cool scene where he walks into this lady's house and we hear him beat the fuck out of this old lady with a hammer. And he grabs a knife. Fuck yeah. He just strolls outside like he didn't commit a murder finds his next victim. We think it's gonna be this couple and their 7 series. Nope, it's this old lady with a million pumpkins on her porch. That fucking ruled. We cut over to the Halloween dance and our main teens are dressed up as a reverse Bonnie and Clyde. Some tiger bitch kisses Cameron and Allison is not happy. They get in a little argument but Cameron tries to be the bigger man and throws her phone into a fucking huge bowl of dip. You're a fucking idiot dude. Dave shows up at the house that Vicky is babysitting at and shows her the tattoo of today's date. He got it because he thought they were gonna fuck for the first time tonight. But by the end of the night, I'll have a totally different meeting for you bub. As they make it on the couch, you hear a noise and it startles Vicky. But Dave doesn't care. It's probably just Julian taking a dump. Julian, played by Jerome and Tambu, jumps down the stairs saying he also heard something. He gives a pretty good description of the boogeyman. Vicky's gonna go check it out, but Julian doesn't trust her because she's a girl. He tells her that something's in his room. She pretends to talk to the shade and tries to scare Julian. The coast is clear, my dude. Dave went out to smoke a joint and dropped his bike while his girl is inside making sure everything is alright. Julian wants Vicky to close the closet door, and she tries, but he must have a bunch of shit blocking it. Dave hears Vicky screaming and tries to save the day, but... I guess he called the cops because Officer Hawking gets a call and Lori hears the call in her police scanner. As Hawking searches the house, Lori pulls up and tells everyone to fuck off. Inside the house, Hawking sees a ghost, and of course it's Vicky. I also love how there's a fucking pumpkin in the fish tank. What did Michael Myers just do that before he left? Lori looks up and sees Myers in the window and takes a shot. Oh, it's only a reflection in the mirror. You're gonna have to do better than that to kill Myers, Lori. Hawking chases after Myers and finds David pinned body to the wall. That's what you get for getting that fucking stupid tattoo. Hawking startles Lori and she fucking pistol whips him. The cops go to Allison's house with Lori and they get the family the fuck out of there. But Allison isn't there. She's out walking with Oscar. Since Cameron and Allison aren't together, Oscar thinks he's a smooth pimp of love. What the fuck? Fucking dork. He blames us on being drunk, but we all know he wanted to do this for some time. In his drunken stupor, he apologizes to the owner of the yard he's currently fucking sitting in. The apology isn't accepted though. This isn't the owner, you fucking idiot. As he tries to escape over this iron fence, he gets stabbed. And Allison goes back and tries to save him. Too late, you better fucking run. She gets to her house, but no one's fucking there. She may have known what was going on, but her phone is balls deep in a fucking bowl of dip. The cops finally make it to Allison, and they pick her up. She tells them that Myers in the area, but she's with the cops now, so everything should be okay, right? Back at Lori's compound house, she opens her secret hideaway room. And what hideout room would be complete without a wall full of guns? Hawking, Allison, and Doc spot Myers walking down the street, and Hawking goes to kill Myers once and for all. Doesn't kill him though. Hawking goes to shoot Myers, but the Doc stops him and then fucking stabs Hawking. What the fuck, Dr. Sartain? Of course, Allison can't get up because, of course, they put her in the back of the fucking SUV. Since Doc is in love with Myers, he drags his body in the back of the SUV with Allison while wearing his fucking mask. As he drives over Hawking's, as we could expect, Myers wakes up and gets the fuck shit up. He kicks up the dividing window and knocks out Doc Myers and then drags his body to the SUV and then. 
Speaking of yes, that was one of the best kills I've seen in a while. That looked fucking legit. Another cop outside Lori's house sees Hawking's cruiser and goes to investigate why Hawking isn't responding. Ray sees the cop cars on the surveillance system and goes outside to investigate like he's a fucking idiot. Oh look, there's a jack o lantern in that cruiser. I fucking ruled. The special effects team really killed it in this movie. Well, of course, Meyer grips up Ray, but he's able to bust a shot out in the air and Lori hears it. Upon investigation, Lori sees Myers and yells for her daughter to get the fuck downstairs. Myers bursts through the window and begins to attack Lori. She's gonna fight back and shoots Myers' hands off, setting her free and letting Lori get to her underground bunker. Myers gets into the house and goes directly into the kitchen. Lori starts bucking off shots from below, just giving her position away. Lori comes back to the main floor on the hunt. Is he in the closet? Nope. What about this completely empty living room? No, keep trying. Lori starts walking down her house room by room to trap Myers. Allison finally gets to the compound and stumbles into the shooting range. This range is kind of scary at night when the shape is after you. Before he follows the trail of blood upstairs, he continues to lock off each room. Is he in the room with all the mannequins? Nope. That trail of blood is a fuck with your emotions. Lori, where is this giant turd? Oh fuck! Lori pulls out a knife and tries to shank him, but Myers turns it around and shanks her with her own knife and throws her out the window. Allison calls out for her mom. Karen opens the door and has her run in the bunker. Myers grabs a fire poker and walks into the kitchen and immediately starts trying to rip off the trap door. Karen grabs her childhood gun, waits for Myers to break into the bunker. Karen cries out for her mother, and this attracts Myers. Gotcha. Lori stabs Myers and cracks him in the face with a cast iron pan after getting smacked around a bit. He falls into the bunker and the two girls escape but Myers grabs Karen by the leg. Allison steps her game up and just starts stabbing Myers until he lets go. Lori traps him in the bunker and begins to fill it up with gas before dropping a flare down to Myers. And he just stands down there like a big old dummy getting burned alive. The rest of the house catches fire, which I don't think insurance is going to cover, and they escape from the house. What I'm assuming is a nod to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They hop into the bed of a truck and drive into the credits. Well, I hope that was a better treat than a trick. I really enjoyed this movie, and in my book, it was the second best movie in the entire Halloween franchise. As of now, I believe they're making two more Halloween movies, and by the time this is being aired, they will already start filming the second one. This is Steel City Dawn. We're signing off, and happy Halloween, everyone.